Hello everyone, Sean here from the Sci-Fi Model Guy and welcome to Chapter 6 of the USS Enterprise 350 scale build from Polar Lights. Now, as you can hear from my voice, I've been greeted with the new year with a nasty little cold, so I'm trying to fight my way through that. And as such, you might see some little weird jump cuts in this video, try to compile it together into a nice 30 minute segment and we will go from there. So in this segment, you're gonna see finally the wiring of the saucer section. We've got a little bit more on the next video for chapter seven, finishing that wiring, and then on to the painting, which I have uh, done. I've actually started painting the model with, with the gray color, and we'll be moving forward pretty quickly with that as time goes. So enjoy this video, everyone. And uh, if you haven't yet, please, please check the community notes on the channel. Um, Boyd over at Trekworks uh, recently announced uh, some news. So if you could please go to that community uh, notification I sent out and take a read it uh, at that, I would really appreciate it. And uh, let's all wish Boyd a quick recovery and strength and goodwill and all of our prayers and hopes. So uh, with that, everyone, enjoy this video and uh, have a great day. Okay, everyone, so I made a little snafu here. As you can see, we have a neck attached to the ship. Now, I just recorded the segment talking about this, and I had recorded a big segment before that talking about all the stuff that we did. And you know what I did? That's right, everyone. I deleted that video. So I'm going to give a quick recap that was of a recap of other videos I had recorded that didn't work out last night. Still with me? Good. Okay. So let's just do a quick rundown of what's gone on since, since the last video. So, um, okay, shuttle bay. We've got the shuttle bay here that has been put in. And uh, that one, I, I did record some of that, but I'm going to just recap it real, real quick here because I probably will cut that out. You'll see here that the shuttle bay has some notches cut out like that. Uh, I did that because I goofed. Uh, when I put in the SMDs that are the ion pods, the little strobe lights that are going to be flashing right here. Uh, if you recall, there's a little, a little light that goes in here and we put a little 0805 in there, a white one, and then covered it with putty so that we can light block it, which reminds me I have to light block this with some black. So um, so I put the putty in and then I had forgotten about the shuttle bays going in so that the shuttle bay wasn't fitting. So after some thought and everything, I just decided to cut some of the floor away to give, to give room so that solved that problem. Okay, shuttle bay also, we have two, three uh, lights, two sections of three, I can never say that right, two sections of three lights in here for the shuttle bay, that's going to illuminate these windows here, and there's also a little 0805 white SMD that I put here, covered it with some solar res to give it a, a nice protection, and that will be a little dome light here, and that's also going to illuminate the window on the shuttle bay here, you can see there I put a mask on that, so um that's that's prepped okay um we've got the two little uh 0805 smds down here to light up the little there's a little green yellow and red lights back here there's three lights up here they're gonna be illuminated from that sorry i'm talking so fast everyone i'm this is like the third time i've talked about this part of the model so i'm trying to uh trying to get through it um okay uh what else do we have uh all the wires here Nice and tacked down with this, with the CA glue. Everything's coming out from the to the front, and um, also uh, okay. We're going to talk about these. Um, going to talk about the uh, the the pylons, this struts for the warp nacelles. Now you see here, I put some putty, and um, I don't know, I don't know if it was me or if it was just this kit or what. I was pretty confident that I had identified the the correct pieces. Uh, the piece numbers here to go together and when i put them together and i was trying to go through into this area this is why i had filmed i'm not going to show that but um when i put it in there there was like th this um part of the pylon was angled one way the other side of the pylon was angled the other way so one was going this way and one was going that way and i had these ugly gaps here that that weren't even so like th this thing is kind of supposed to be flush against the hull um, and I know in the actual, uh, kit or in the actual show, there's a tiny gap here. And I think that's supposed to signify that they could eject themselves. And I think Kirk, uh, 
uh, mentioned it in, I think, the Apple the episode. I have to go back and check, but he talks about ejecting the uh, warp nacelles or jettisoning them. Um, anyway, it was just a nice way to explain why there was a gap in their model kit, I'm sure. But uh, anyway, so I mean, to be screen accurate, it was okay to leave a little gap here. And I was going to do that. But then I had these ugly wide gaps and it was shorter on this end and bigger on this end and this the opposite on this side. So I'm like, you know what? I'm just going to putty this thing. So I ended up doing uh, filling the gap with some CA glue. So if, uh, if you're not familiar, so the CA glue that we use is also called gap filling medium, which says so right there. And you can use this to fill big, large gaps. And I decided to go that route with it. Uh, one, because it was such a wide gap and I didn't want putty flaking off and breaking over time. And I also wanted a little extra support for these, these pylons going in. So even though they're, they're in there very tightly. Um, so I put that in, hit it with the uh, accelerant, and then filed it down and used that. So I probably spent a good 30 minutes, maybe an hour, on both both of these uh, sides, uh, filling it with the CA glue, sanding it down, grinding it, and then putting putty over it. And then today I came through and sanded it down. A lot of work. Um, it's it. I still may need to do some sanding work. We'll see when I prime it and see what it looks like. It's, it's always hard to tell uh, how you, how good your putty work is until you prime your piece. Um, that there's a little a little inside baseball there. Um, Okay, so there's that. The wires for here, so you're going to see I put three wires here. Two of these are what we, you know, just positive and negative for the power. And this white one here that I put through, there's a little timing device on the Bussard collector, the LEDs that we showed in chapter one when we unboxed this. So yeah, uh, once you glue these things in there, there is a little hole right here. And all you do is you just feed the wires through there and it goes through and you have to kind of pull it back in and push it back and work with it. And, but eventually they come out and I just make sure that the, they're all three of them are long enough to go far out from the nacelle so that I can wire them up and then also down through here to the front of the ship. So it's kind of like this big U uh, of a wire. So I did that with both sides. Another little bit of work that I did was uh, I masked the windows here uh, with the masking set that I got from HDA Model Works. Shout out to, to uh, Jerry over there. And uh, I think there's enough on here to do two kits, but I ordered an extra one just in case, just to have it. So, all right, everyone. So that's that. And um, now I'm going to end this section, which is a redo of a bunch of others so i do apologize for that so uh the next section we're going to see me gluing this thing on and it'll explain some other stuff so um with that um see you in a second everyone okay everyone here we go the ship is uh ready to be put together so we've got all the wiring is done i've tested everything uh plugged in all these things and i also uh cleaned up all the the wiring and you know undid everything and made sure that everything is you know kind of neat and tidy so i've got the strobe uh the strobe plus and minus uh tagged here these two right there the positive and negative for all the wires include from the neck including all the the wiring here is is all in these two things and then we've got the power for the uh the sard collectors uh, taped off over here on the side and similarly with uh, this side everything is is nice and put together and clean and ready uh, for the, for the final assembly here of this so okay well what here we go no no better thing to do than to do it so I've got my glue here and I'm gonna move this piece over here and I'm going to start by putting in the glue into the channels here. So a little bit unlike uh, before, I'm okay with putting a little bit more here. I don't want to have it, I don't want the glue squirting out on this part of the neck here because it would be very hard to kind of grind down and, and slide. But we can have it a lot more here along the spine because we can easily sand that down. 
I think I might have gotten some. Yes, I did. And take care of that. So right now I'm just putting the glue into the channel. And I went through earlier and made sure that as much paint as stuff I could clean out of here was done. I'm going to do a little bit here. I'm going to try not to get it in, in there. The spine here. And then the channel down here. A little bit. Should be wearing gloves probably for this, but I didn't put them on and we're committed now. I'm just going to have to make sure to wash my hands after this. Okay. Kind of interesting to watch glue being applied, huh? Now this uh, part of the deflector dish array here, uh, I did light block that inside and out right here and then scraped away all the paint there. And I glued, I glued this piece on to here a little while ago. So uh, again, just we glued the neck, the shuttle bay, and the deflector dish assembly thing on one side of the ship. So the other side of the ship is uh, pretty bare. So, all right, so I've got that pretty much good to go. I'm going to set that over here and just kind of prop it so that it doesn't get that. Uh, there we go. It's more or less, whoops, more or less level. So it doesn't start dripping down. And I'm going to just put some more glue down on this side. Maybe do a little bit of a time lapse here. Okay. So we got that. It's over there. This is over here. Okay. So I'm going to be putting these together and I'm going to be concentrating on not getting these wires pinched in here at all. Um, and if you can see here, looking back on it, I'm now kind of wishing I would have made these a little bit longer. They're, they're out enough for me to work with, but if I had had another few inches, two or three inches out here, I probably would have preferred that. Now I did trim these down a little bit to get them to fit together. Um, so, so there's that, but, uh, yeah, it would have been, would have been preferable to to have a little bit more to work with but it is what it is so all right let me kind of ball these up being very careful not to get any glue on my fingers here all right Let me just, before I really snap this in there, I'm going to make sure I got nothing pinched. Looks pretty good. Okay. All right, so that's really good right here. Now, the spine back here, now I did talk about that it was going to be splitting a little bit, so we have to help that. So I, before I started here, I took off about six pieces, not about six, exactly six of tape. And we're going to be using this to squeeze this back end of the, the aft end of the ship together. So I'm squeezing very hard here. pulling very tightly getting that as tight and close together as I can so you can see here when I'm when I press on it you can see it coming together so we need to help that glue stick so squeeze and pull 
And then when I let it go, you, hopefully we won't see the separate so much. So good. So that kind of stayed together. So the more we squeeze, maybe it would have been different if I had started on the forward section, but okay, not bad. Pretty, pretty happy with this actually. I see glue com coming out of here. It's, it's squirting out, so that is, uh, that's good. That means it's filling the gap. And when this is all done, I'm gonna let this sit pretty much for 24 hours, and then tomorrow night, I'll come out and uh, take a look at it. The next video after this will be, uh, we're gonna be doing the wiring on the saucer section. So I've kind of got that started a little bit, uh, somewhat, but the um, we'll be doing that, laying the uh, navigation lights, the red and the green, uh, the strobes uh, uh, for that on the top part and all that good stuff. Let me see here. Looks like if I'm squeezing, I'm still getting a little bit of a result here. So. Squeezing really tight. I'm, I'm trying not to put any pressure on the pylons here. I'm just pushing on the hull itself. Who knows? Just don't know if this is helping at all, but it can't hurt. Pretty good though. Even when I'm feeling this, it's it's relatively smooth. We're not going to have to do very much sanding or putty work. Now let's check the bottom. Always important. Okay, so I'm squeezing. I'm getting a little bit of a result here and back here as well. So let me pull a few more pieces of tape. I think uh, four, four should do it. Now, when I did the masking, uh, if, if you recall, I did mask the uh, windows on the neck here. I haven't done the uh, the main body of the ship here because I knew we we're going to be putting tape down. Because if we put that tape down, when we take it off, it would just rip those masks right off. It would be a waste. Hopefully all this is in focus. really happy with this this is nice uh, nice and smooth we're not gonna have to do too much putty work that's a great great omen okay we'll put some on the aft section just to be sure Okay. Well, there we go, everyone. We are committed. <laughs> so uh, the ship's all nice and put together. We got the putty uh, going here at the connection for the pylons to the main main uh, secondary hull. We've got the power strips going for the bizarre collectors. They're going to go through the warp nacelles here. I'll zoom out so we know what I'm pointing at. There we go. And... That's pretty much it. So this is gonna give, uh, I'm gonna give this a good day or two to dry. What we're looking at here is the saucer section. The secondary hull is all assembled and wired and waiting for paint and sanding and all, or sanding then paint rather, and all that good stuff. So uh, we're gonna take care of uh, wiring the saucer section here. So this actually should be a little bit easier than all the uh, intricate wiring we had to do and tacking down of stuff on the secondary hole. We've got a lot more room to work with here. And uh, so let's get going. <clears throat> so the first thing I want to point out here, and I will zoom in until I can find what I want to show you. So right there, 
Yep, there's my finger. Okay, so right here, if you see, there's a little number six. And uh, I just took a little Sharpie there and I and I wrote that down. And I did that all around the hole. So, and what that denotes is how many lights I want to put down here. So this is a section of six lights. Here's a section of three. Another six here. Here's one that says three U for three up. And that means that we're gonna use this little piece of sprue that I laid down and lay the uh, lay the the light up upward. So most of the other lights here are gonna be laying flat like this, and then this one's gonna be laying up like that because the window's actually on the the floor here or on the bottom where the other lights are along the rim. Okay, so zoom out there a little bit and uh, so on and so on. Uh, I've got all the the lights marked. So the big sections here, the big windows get six lights, so the small ones get three. And then these uh, two here, there's uh, one here and one here on either side that get put on these little pieces of sprue that I put up. So I just lay those there so I have something nice to stick the, the light to and then put, lay the CA glue down. All right. Um, uh, we are going to put some lights here in the middle of the saucer section uh, that, that we're going to cover a little bit later. Uh, we have to construct a little a little doodad for that. And uh, we're going to put a couple of lights here in the back uh, for the impulse engine. And then, uh, of course, the navigation lights, uh, red and green. And then the, there's two little white SMDs that go here on the side. So we'll, we'll get to that uh, uh, a little bit later. So... Um, what I want to talk about here is what I've done here. So you see here, there. let me get these little guys out of the way. Um, you see here, I have pre-cut some of my yellow wire, the positive wire, all the way around. And I taped it down. So if you're doing this kit, you're going to notice there's little channels here that are cut out. And they're made for the wires to go down so you don't pinch them when you put it together. Uh, which I'm really thankful for, the designers of the kit over at Polar Lights are pretty considerate about, about the folks that want to light the kit. Anyway, um, so I did that. I, I taped them down, and I pre-cut and pre-soldered on wires to all of my sections of, of lighting here, so you don't have to watch me do that again. Uh, so I just, you know, it took about 30 minutes or so to get all this made. Now, all the wires on these are... Oh, about four inches long or so, okay? And I'm going to talk a little bit about how we're going to wire them up. So there's two ways you can wire things uh, with models, pretty much. There's a parallel and then there's a series. I think that's what they're called. And basically, you, can, you have two options. You can connect wires together or I'm sorry, sections of light together. So you have this section of light and it's got the terminals back here and you plug terminals like this, you know, you daisy chain them, you know, like the, the, the positive goes to positive, negative, negative, and all the way around like that. And you have this big circle of lights that are all connected. Uh, that's not really ideal because if one of these goes bad, um, if some for some reason, then that means... Any, everything down the line from there is going to go bad as well. So it's better to have one source of power that each of them tie into. Okay. So uh, I think that's parallel or series. I, I don't know. I'm not an electrician. <laughs> so, but uh, what I do know is uh, it, when you can avoid it, it's good not to connect um, other lights to your little terminals here. You want to have them independent for the most part as much as possible. Okay, so I have uh, pre-measured this long wire. I'm sorry about stuttering here. Let me turn the light around, so hopefully this is not too bright. Let me check the camera. That's a little bright. There we go. Uh, uh, there we go. Okay. That's so I can see and you can see. Now, I'm going to lift the saucer up. What you'll see here, if you, hopefully you can see, is like right here, I have stripped away some wire a little bit right there. And I've done that in each part of the wire where we're, we're gonna tie in some of these things. So 
I want to get, the, I want this to be as clean as I possibly can get it. So the idea is to make sure I'm in the camera here. Let's say, so here is a, a six set, a, a section of six, and I'm going to take the positive wire and I'm going to tie it into here. Okay. Like, so I'm not going to wrap it around now because I have to finish talking about that. So I'll do that. And then I'll get the, the a th section of three here and do that and tie that around there. And then what I'm going to do is have the, uh, some of my uh, shrink tubing already placed around here. So when I get these tied in, I'll slide that up and, and take care of that. So that will secure that in there. Okay. Um, then I'm going to go around and do the same thing with the negative side. So that's going to take quite a while, but I want to do this right. I want to do it clean and I want to do it so that there's no chance of these things touching each other. So now the only trick to this is that you have to uh, pre-cut your shrink tubing and put them on this on here, you know, before where you're going to tie it in. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. And then I will come back and we'll talk some more. Okay. So we'll see you in a second. All right. <clears throat> the pieces of the shrink tubing here have been all cut and placed all the way around the, the model where I had pre-stripped it. Now, um, talking about the pre-stripping uh, pre these things, I did use my, my little, my little handy thing here. And um, I don't have a spare piece to show you, but what basically what I would do is I just, you know, clip off a little piece like that and then you go to the other side and clip that and it will kind of expose some and then you just pull you just pull it down and it exposes the wire so <clears throat> excuse me so i have uh here now this is going to look really messy and i do apologize for that but there's nothing much i can do about it so for this section here we have a section of six lights and a section of three that are going to tie into one of the bare spots that i that I pulled out for this. Okay. So what I had to do was you, you know, you move the, your shrink tubing away, you wrap the thing around, then move it to the other side and wrap it on, on that. So you got two pieces coming out either side. So, um, I'm going to get my soldering gun set up, soldering iron. And I'm going to solder this together. So that is actually, it already is set up. What am I saying? So what I'm going to do here, uh, so this is very crucial. I'm putting this piece of uh, cutting mat down here because I don't want to get any of the solder onto the, onto the model. Right? Alternately, I could probably just take this whole thing off and wire them without it, but uh, I don't want to get it kind of misplaced or it's it's lined up is what I'm trying to say here as I concentrate on soldering and not breathing in the fumes. Don't know if it's dangerous, but I mean, when you see smoke on something, I don't really want to inhale it. It's metal. <laughs> so, All right, so that's good. Now I'm just going to slide over the shrink, slide the shrink tubing over. Give it a quick burn and there we go. Now I'm not going to tie these down quite yet here because I have the, um, the negative uh, wires to do on this as well. So uh, it's, what I am going to do is just tape it down and we'll keep. Okay. So, so that's the basic philosophy uh, that we're working with here. And I'm going to continue without burning my pad. <laughs> um, I'm just going to continue going around here in this manner. And then I'll do the same thing with the negative wire. Okay. And then I'll come back and show you what it, what it looks like. And we'll get, we'll get it all uh, secured down uh, with CA glue. You know, put it down in those slots. Make it nice and neat. Uh, and use the accelerant that we have and it'll be really nice and pretty. Uh, so we'll see you uh, in a few seconds, everyone. 
Okay, so everything's all done. Uh, since the last segment, I think this took me maybe an hour, uh, perhaps a little bit longer than that. But uh, everything looks really good. It's working. Uh, the technique worked pretty well. The only little thing that uh, that I ran into was, uh, and I should have predicted this, but I, I didn't. Um, now, when I was laying down this, this uh, pad here to do the soldering work on the yellow wire, that worked fine. Um, and then I tacked it down with the glue and I didn't think that it would get in the way of putting it in for the blue wire because I had tacked it down and it's all connected so it kind of jumbled so I, I did kind of have to put it in little weird spots like that and and everything so uh, it worked out okay but um that was uh, the one hitch that that I had with it but uh, I'm super happy with this because uh, again, we've got uh, the shrink tubing in all of these areas, so there's no chance of, of this uh, touching or coming together. We use a CA glue and the accelerant, uh, which is right here, the Instaset, to get that glue done. And everything is, is glued down nice in stages in various spots here so it won't move around. This these wire will not go anywhere. So... That's a good thing. So I'm going to go ahead and turn on the power here. So you prepare your eyes for a little brightness. Okay, and everything's going really well. And um, again, we don't have this illuminated yet. And uh, we have to still put in the, uh, the 0805 SMDs in the nav lights here. Uh, that will be the strobe. They'll be flashing and connected to the... Um, whoops lost the uh, the power there just popped off there we go um so we're going to put those in in here and there's some things we're going to do with some solar res and, and and everything but you see here these little clips hopefully you see that yeah um these little clips will hold the wire and that that'll go down over here and we'll connect to the power and i think we're going to put the uh put the navigation board somewhere in here so um Okay, I'm going to flip this over, uh, holding the wire over here. I don't want to touch. And so we can kind of see uh, how it's looking. So we've got really nice, uh, soft, warm light coming through here. And the um, uh, Again, we sprayed that window with a little... I, I did the spray of the Insignia White from Tamiya that now on the... Uh, engineering section secondary hall i sprayed some vallejo uh insignia white it was uh this stuff here and i have some spray from tania tamia that worked so i just sprayed around in there and that worked well um so and then on the sides here you can see hopefully you can there we go nice warm soft yellow light or uh yellowish light that's coming through looks really good that uh, diffusing helped out really well so super happy with this and that's that i'm gonna turn off the power all right so um the next couple stages we're gonna do here again uh we're gonna put in the nav lights on this on this uh here 0805 and I'll talk about the techniques that I'm going to do with that in the next segment. And then we will be putting the uh, impulse engine lights here. I'm just going to go with some red uh, and or maybe orange. If I have orange, I'll put that. Uh, if not, I'll just do red. And um, let's see. Uh, and then we got to build this, uh, put the nav board in, wire that up, and then uh, build a little contraption that that'll be pretty simple stuff so all this uh, folks is uh, real simple again compared to what we were doing before a lot of uh, wiring and everything so the uh, stro the nav board is going to be the only kind of tricky part but we'll talk our way through that when the time comes which is coming really close so all right uh, that's going to be it for this segment i'm going to bed and i will pick this up tomorrow as we do some more work on the saucer stand by <laughs> 